opined on the digital quality of life rating amongst 110 nations. For all those who have heard about the digital quality of life rating for the first time, it is carried out by a British company called Surfshack. It ranks countries based on five fundamental digital well-being pillars which are internet affordability, internet quality, electronic infrastructure, electronic security and electronic government. This year, we have seen rapid advancements in the tech industry and with this, India is taking a leap towards becoming a $1 trillion digital economy. Welcome viewers to My Startup TV. I am your host, Eshwarya. I'm back with another episode of What's the Trend. When it comes to technology in India, the premier trade body is NASCOM. As rightly claimed by them, they are the chamber of commerce of the tech industry. It is guided by India's vision to become a leading digital economy globally. In this episode of the Tech Next Show, tech leaders from NASCOM Andhra Pradesh and Telangana will be sharing their thoughts about the new age of technology and its contribution to the economy. Emerging technologies that will help India become a $1 trillion economy will include AI, ML, data science and blockchain technology. Another technology that is emerging as the sunrise industry is geospatial technology. There is blockchain as a technology that companies are, like ours are using purely to create trust, uh, inter-party trust in, in data interchange. Uh, to that extent, uh, adoption globally has really, really picked up. Uh, adoption in India is starting to pick up. So those sectors which were early adopters, let's say education sector, enterprise, uh, across the globe, we are now seeing, I would say, uh, robust interest, if you like, early stage interest um, in within India. Uh, and. I still think it is. Uh, it's a little early. I, I think really the uh, the breaking point will sometime come in 2022. I think it's been slow because of the pandemic. But uh, there is uh, when you will when we look at our pipeline of potential deals, there is a robust interest now starting to emerge from Indian enterprise. I think uh, with the advent of AI, um, like like life comes in a full circle. Uh, maybe AI is the inflection point for IT services industry in India. Uh, we've seen that happen to us. Uh, we are not a tier one company. Uh, probably a lot of people don't know who we are, but the kind of clientele that we serve is definitely on par with the tier one companies. The reason being, we've got that capability to deliver on the AI ML promise. And how do we do it? We have to continue to educate the customers as well as the engineers internally um, I think just taking a segue, um, one reason why Indian companies kind of slightly lag is because of the impatience more than anything else. Uh, they don't have the capability to see things through, whether it is a services company, whether it is a client, vendor, doesn't matter. People want quick results. I think it's high time we do away with the jugards, put in all the hard work that is needed and get the actual thing out. Um, so for us, for young companies, uh, for all the entrepreneurs in India, I think one thing that we, ho we have to be absolutely, absolutely clear is we are not laggards in the ML AI space at all. Uh, it is absolutely a level playing field like Srikant mentioned. Um, you are at the start of the race. Now it's up to you to build that endurance and go all the way. Uh, and ap this is also a marathon. This is not like a sprint. You can't run and say, oh, I've done this. Yes, we're seeing billion dollar companies in India. Yes, that's that's all happening, uh, but they've taken time to get there. The time frame might have reduced, but they've put in all the hard effort, uh, hard work and efforts. So there is endurance that is needed. There's lack of impatience uh, that is absolutely mandatory. Of course, keep up to speed with the technology trends. And if you have this three in a box, right? You have an engineer, you have a subject matter expert, uh, you have the data science people together and work on a problem instead of doing it like a, sorry, it, it, just doing it in pun, not a factory model where you do one thing after the other. But if you are thinking together and if you implement this three in a box, I think Indian IT companies, whether it is products, services, doesn't matter. With AI, 
uh, there will definitely be a, a difference in how they're perceived. What is short in our country is data, geographic information. Even today, we don't have a, a high resolution or a large scale map of the entire country. We probably have on a 25,000 scale. What we really need to have is at least something like a five to 10,000 scale at the minimum. Now that itself is a, a huge opportunity, but uh, thanks to the new policies, I think there are major flagship programs being uh, conceived. And I think uh, there is a strong role for startups and a strong role for technology to bring in, uh, uh, what do you call it? AI, ML, and all these uh, technologies to the fore in uh, implementing uh, these uh, solutions. This industry uh, needs, I would seriously say, it has a potential of generating a million jobs in the next decade, or even uh, in a lesser period of time. Uh, the right programs, upskilling, the base, uh, uh, graduation, post-graduation programs, although they are out there. Uh, we have seen a huge gap from what is being taught today to what is actually required in the market. So IAC, we have taken an initiative about 15 years ago. We actually started an academy for skilling internally our own resources. For example, he comes from a survey uh, background. We actually teach him to do a lot of things beyond what he has been taught and make him job ready. Similarly, for a, a graduate to be taught the science of photogrammetry, that is three-dimensional mapping, we take him on a, a program for about three months from any base degree he may have with arts and science, teach him the uh, just like you're taught in the army, uh, the art of map making, its fundamentals, etc., all crashed into a three-month program, and then he, we try and make him job ready. In the same uh, breadth, we have also trained a lot of our clients using the same infrastructure to upskill uh, them on their side. And uh, today we have the academy running programs, which are quite unique. We are probably one private company who are the only qualified company who are able to teach them uh, marine surveys, hydrography, marine cartography. So all these kind of uh, skills that are required, yes, there needs to be a lot of upskilling that is required, but there is, I think, an equal uh, spread of uh, uh, available uh, institutions and new uh, academic programs that are being set up by several institutions who have uh, you know, thought GIS as a huge opportunity and uh, it's happening as we speak. Even though technology originated in the US, but now India has become the IT hub for companies across the globe. But still, there is a lack of skilled human resources to tap into the opportunities being created by these new age technologies. Since the IT sector plays a key role in the economic growth of India, we have to skill the youth in these emerging technologies. Also, startups and young companies should open all doors toward adopting these modern technologies, which will play a vital role in making India a $1 trillion digital economy. That's all for today.